Welcome to the Uncommon Human Podcast, where we help you perform the common uncommonly well. Your coach for all things physical and spiritual is Derek De Rosario, who for 25 years has brought transformation to thousands of clients. With God's help, Coach Derek has overcome many adversities on his own journey of faith and fitness, and now he's the owner of Fit to Serve Fitness in Henderson, Nevada. Having discovered tennis at a young age, he excelled at the amateur, intercollegiate, and professional levels. Afterwards, he discovered the sport of CrossFit, and by 2019 had ranked number one CrossFitter for the state of Nevada in his division. Having achieved all this, Coach Derek now considers himself an ambassador for Christ to help you in your journey to become the uncommon human through faith and fitness. Here with today's podcast is Coach Derek. All right, welcome to the Uncommon Human Podcast. We are here with Roman Purdy, and we're going to work up the ladder on the pyramid. You take a look at the pyramid. We've been going over what the Uncommon Human looks like. We made our rounds from the bottom to the top on the faith side and the fitness side. Now we're coming back to the pillar called believe and we got roman right here he's yes. uh how old are you roman i just turned i'm well actually i haven't just turned i'm 18 years old roman's mm -hmm. 18 years old so roman we we're gonna take take a look at believe tell me or tell the audience what does that mean to you what does believe mean to you well i feel like belief is like kind of when I think of belief I think about Jesus and my belief in him and stuff like that of course you can like people believe in all sorts of things but I choose like the one true like thing to put my faith in so yeah amen amen yeah there's a lot of things that people put their faith in right a lot of things that the world is like yanking at us going hey you better believe in this and especially you probably seen a lot in high school years right <laughs> the kids are like, oh, yeah. hey, come on, Roman, come over to our side. It's it's They're cool crazy. over here, buddy. <laughs> right? Yeah, they are crazy in high school. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's only going to get worse if, if if we're not strong in our faith. Right. Mm -hmm. But as we, we talk about faith, we talk about believe. Let's, let's kind of rewind, get back into the days where um. How did you receive Christ and how did that become real to you? Um, tell us about kind of like how that took place. So for like a little bit of backstory, my dad has been a, has been a pastor basically my whole life. So I was like, grew up in the church. I learned about like stuff of the Bible very quickly and accepted Christ at a very young age. But it wasn't until like my high school years that I like took it seriously, you know, and I was like uh -huh. a kid in like elementary or middle school. I was like, you know, it wasn't like all there, you know. But once I hit high school, I was like, okay, it's time to own it. It's time to like, like make it real, make it happen, you know. Awesome, awesome. Was there a uh, a certain time like you said, middle school it became, or was it um, VBS? Was there a certain event that you were like, hey, oh, Lord, yeah. I want I want to make you the Lord of my life, and that was like the time you accepted, or was there an altar call? Um, or was it you privately by your bedside and accepting Christ? How did that take place? I, I don't know. I think it was just like I came to the realization that like, oh, I'm not like as strong as I think I am. Like it's all up here, but it, none of it's like in my like right here, you know. So it was yes. like, yo, it's time to like take a stand, time to take charge. Yeah. How old were you when that took place? Oh, that's a good question. You know, <laughs> I have no idea. I would say it's like a couple of years ago, though. So, couple of years ago. Okay. So this was high school. Yeah. High Let's high say school. sophomore, freshman year, sophomore. Okay. So that's good because man, it is, uh, you know, being with the youth, my wife and I, and seeing kind of like the junior high and high school. And you talk about it was here, but didn't hit here. And uh, we see this a lot, even with pastors, kids and being growing up in the church. And sometimes we want to pull the opposite direction and, and we want to see what's on the other side of the fence. And so um, when you when you started, when you said, you know, I'm all in for Christ, what was the some of the, the tough things through high school that you encountered? Oh, what, some of the things were like, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you like, like, you don't smoke? That's so weird. You don't drink? I'm like, bro, we're in high school. We're like not even legally allowed to and stuff like that. Yeah, it was like and especially around COVID and stuff like that, 
Uh huh. It was like about the like vaccine and stuff. It was like I don't know. It was like craziness. But it's mainly stuff like oh you don't listen to this artist or like. You don't listen to their music or stuff like that, or you don't cuss. And I'm like, yo, and I like try to defend myself and defend my faith. But yeah. By me living differently, it sparks more questions because they're like, whoa, you're different mm. than like everybody else here. So it it's a good thing, you know. Yeah. No. Absolutely. You you got to stand out in the crowd a little bit, huh? And did you find when you stood up for truth? God kind of honored that? Um, I would say so, because like yeah. now my friends are asking me more questions about the Bible because like I'm more like outspoken with it. And they're like, I don't know, I'm getting a lot more questions, especially with my closer friends who are, I would say, weaker. Like they are in a Christian household, but they're they have no fruit and stuff like that. So it's like that. So it's no, that's awesome. So in high school, what high school did you go to? I went to Nevada State High School. Nevada State. So it wasn't a Christian school, right? No. Okay. And um, did you have Christian friends around you? Um, I would say I'm a my youth group, but... Just your I, group? Okay. Yeah, I met one probably Christian friend at Nevada State High School, but it was mainly me pulling him up, man. It was wow. Like, wow. Yo, stay with me, bro. Like, you still yeah. get like, in all this mess and stuff like that, but there yeah. was barely any christians so. yeah yeah and um i think that's great because sometimes we can be kind of sheltered in maybe at a christian school christian home and not getting to see kind of what the real world looks like and you got to see firsthand <laughs> could be good bad and ugly this all depends right but you standing firm in your faith and walking upright did you get to invite some of your friends or this one friend to a youth group or, or to, to church with you? I did. What? I did get to invite some of them, bro. They said they liked it, but since they can't really drive places, they can't really go all the time. But okay. the friend who I was like mainly pulling up and stuff like that, he is also a PK. So he invited me to his church and stuff like that. And I got to go check it out and see like how it is and stuff like that. So it was pretty neat. Uh, it goes both cool. ways. Cool, cool. So he's a, he's another Christian, right? He's grown up in a uh, with his dad being a pastor. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, that's cool. Um, so tell me about now that you you're graduating, right? Or you you just graduated? I just graduated. Wow, how do you feel, man? How do you feel? Feels good. It feels good. I have my diploma right here. <laughs> wow, I Did keep you... this thing with me, bro. Oh, there it is, oh. man. Don't lose that thing. Like right? it's useful, bro. Did you like get to I throw your throw hat? Away. You get to throw your hat up? I did not throw my hat. No. Hold on to that hat, right? Yeah. No, that's awesome. So what school are you going to, Roman? For college, I oh, am gosh. going to Liberty University to pursue my bachelor's degree. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about Liberty. Where is that at? Liberty University is in Lynchburg, Virginia. It is a pretty far, pretty far away from here, wow. like halfway across the United States. I but... mean, you're getting as far as you can from us. Come on, man. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Yo, for hey, real. Come on. How are I'm you going to get back here? You Are you going to be able to come back anytime soon? I'll run the whole way, bro. I'll, I'll yeah. run it. It'll be like a marathon or something, bro. Oh, man. So nah. when you start, you're going to Liberty mm -hmm. all the way across the country. When do you start? I start August 15th. So I'll, I mean, August 17th. So I leave August 15th. Okay. That's in like two months. Like exactly, bro. It's coming up quick. Running huh? out of time, running out of time. Running but, out of time. So let me ask you, what are you doing this summer as you prep in your spiritual walk? Oh, this summer? Yeah, so, yeah, because you're going to yeah. be up against, I mean, Liberty is, a, a, is it a Christian school, it right? It is a Christian school, so okay. it is, it's a little more helpful, but that doesn't mean everybody there is a Christian. That's so. right, absolutely. So what are you doing this summer to allow yourself to be armored up and ready to go for the battle that's about to begin? One cool thing I'm doing is actually tomorrow I'm leaving for a Christian summer camp. Okay. I'll be gone for the whole week. That's like a really, like, that's convenient awesome. timing you know so what, literally leaving tomorrow yeah yeah so. no that's awesome and um 
Yeah. So you get to be around like-minded and now the camp, is it seniors or is it high schoolers or all college people or? It's all high school. So it's okay. my last camp of my high school years. And then I'm off. It's with all my buddies, good old pals at my youth group. So cool. Your last hurrah to say bye, huh? Oh yeah. No, that's cool. And a lot of your, are you, do you have any friends going to Liberty with you? I do not. Don't know anyone. I, I have nobody. I know like one guy there who convinced me to go. Maybe nice. yeah, like two guys. Wow. Other than that, it's it's me by myself. Are you, know? you rooming with any of them uh, as in the dorm? I am not. You're not. Okay. You don't. Do you know your roommate? Um, he sent me like one text uh-huh. saying hello, <laughs> and I was like, hello. And that was just that was about it, bro. Hey, <laughs> I'm gonna this, meet him when I'm there. I'll meet him I love I'm there. it, man. Just that's ministry, man. Just changes. Who knows what's gonna be in front of you as you arrive right Mm -hmm. i know i had a big surprise when i showed up in the dorm i had dean wong was his name he was a big old security sumo wrestler guy and he was a senior he wasn't even in my uh my age and i was on the tennis team and he was like oh man it wasn't a pretty sight it was a it was a year living with that guy within like a 10 by 10 so he took up half of the room oh man we got war stories war stories and (laughs) I'm sure you'll hear about war stories, but that's cool that you get to, I didn't never got to talk to my roommate and didn't even get to choose my roommate. So yeah, I don't um, get to choose mine either. No. And, um, wow. Wow. So um, you've been in fitness for some time. You've been r- doing runs, right? Tell us about some of the Spartans and all oh, the Spartans. Yeah. Awesome. I want to, I want to let us, let us hear about that, that piece because faith in fitness, we, we look at belief we know you're a believer in Jesus Christ and how important that is in your walk. But now let's look at the fitness side. Uh, speak a little bit about these runs that you've done. When did you start? Oh, the Spartan runs. So yeah. they I think they open up at like 14 and 15. That is like the minimum age that you can do them. Okay. And even before then, I was like running a little bit. I would do like, you know, the race for life. Do you know what that is? Uh-huh. I'd run yeah. those and stuff like that. Okay. Little charity things. But the Spartan races are where it gets serious. You know, those are like the 30 obstacles, the plus miles, the three different races, the super sprint and the beast, you know? Wow. Um, It was like back then when I got my trifecta, which is all three races, Uh it was five miles, nine miles and 13 miles plus 30 obstacles. Wow. So that was pretty crazy. It really like you were really praying to God the whole time, especially for the last couple of miles. You're like, yo, just get me through this, man. Come on, bro. Yes. And and if you don't uh, complete one of the obstacles, do you oh, do yeah. any, any burpees? Oh, yeah, bro. The first oh. one, I failed like three obstacles. So it was like what? 30 burpees. I failed like four, actually. So I had to no. do 120, man. Wow. No wonder you're so good at burpees. Bro, yeah, Look at that. Bro. See, man, you got all that practice in. All the practice from failure, it teaches you, you know? <laughs> it does teach you. You learn a lot from falling forward, right? It's true. Pick yourself right back up. Yeah, Pick the yourself Spartan back races, up. bro, they like really taught you how to like, like have endurance and have like, mm-hmm. like strength because you had to make it the whole race. You couldn't like sprint at the beginning, bro. You had to pace yes. yourself. And yes. you could see a lot of like biblical aspects when doing a Spartan. Like you want to give up and stuff like that, but you have your mm-hmm. friends and family there who are with you the whole time that are helping yes. you up and like, I can help you doing the obstacles. I can help you doing your burpees and stuff like that. And it was just, it was so cool. My dad turned it into a teachable moment all the time. Wow. That's so cool. And Paul talks about so much about running the race, right? Mm-hmm. Keeping your eyes on the prize and, you know, not looking left or right. And and those are important, especially, you know, like you said, those parallels in our fitness journey, when we get to see adversity or when it doesn't make sense on paper, it looks kind of scary, oh, yeah. right? Like, oh my gosh, who's going to do that, right? Yeah, like who's going to do like a rope climb, a rig, a spear throw? Who is going to yes. sign up for that, bro? That doesn't make sense. And then when you finish, you're like, when's the next one? Mm-hmm. All right, give me the next one, right? So how many have you done, Roman? Oh, um, my first year, I got my double trifecta. So in the one year, I completed all the races uh-huh. twice okay wow, wow. all them twice so that was like six the next year i did three three and then this year i did two so like about 14 like maybe because during covid they had to shut down so i couldn't okay. do it then 
Wow. Wow. Did, did you, did you, you didn't do any during COVID that? No, nothing at all. They were all closed. So tell me this. So you're, you're, um, you do this with your family, right? Yeah. You're, so, so tell me about that. You got your, your mom does it right. Your dad does it, your sister or. Yeah, we would do it with our family at first. And then okay. we'd bring on our youth group. And okay. We'd be like, come on, you guys go do this. And then we'd have them do it. And then we'd bring on like close friends and stuff like that. Very recently, we read, we ran with uh, Kenyon, Fred, and M. We took them okay. to the Spartan race. Okay. And their older brother, Alex, too. And it was like, it was crazy. Like, they were like, wow. realized how like hard it was and difficult. And they're like, next time we do one, it's not going to be the same. We are not going to fail the same amount of obstacles and stuff like that. It wow. Was, like, really cool. That's super cool. No, that's awesome. Um, it, Are there any um Spartans on the East Coast? No, bro. I looked it up. I looked no. it up. So I was like, I want to do it. They are like the closest ones, like four hours away from oh. me. So what city? I mean, what state? It's in, it's in Virginia, but it's like, oh, it's in Virginia. It's like that way. Uh, wow, 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 wow. So four hours away, huh? Maybe, maybe, you know, Hey, you may have one on the East coast that you have to tackle. That might be one of the, one That'd of your cool. graduation after your freshman year, who knows what's going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. No, that's super cool. Now, recently, you and I, we we headed down to Mexico. Remember that? We did. Of course, Woo! I remember that, bro. How could I, I forget know. that, bro? Come on, son. <laughs> You're like, come on. You're like, so yeah, we got to. Well, tell us a bit, a little bit about what you did down there. Oh, what we did down there was yeah. crazy, man. Okay. We ate a lot of food. You know, that was the good yeah. stuff. We were able to minister to some of the kids there. And yes. especially some very poverty stricken places like Home X, bro. Mm. That area was crazy. But yes. Otay Mesa, I was able wow. to teach to the youth kids there. That was cool. A lesson, and you were able to do a little lesson too. Oh, man. Oh, Come on, man. man. I heard it was a fire message, man. Oh, no, man. On. I was trying to get in your room to see your message. Okay, okay bro. T tell them about your message. Tell them about the, 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 the balloon and oh, all the that. activity. Yeah, tell bro. us about. That was so, so cool. <laughs> for some for some backstory, I was teaching okay. on Jonah, right? Yeah. So jo the main thing about Jonah is that he's eaten by a big fish. So we yeah. got this tarp and we put the tarp over all the kids, right? Yeah. We're sitting in the tarp. And I was like, Jonah was in here for three days and three nights. And I had a can of tuna on me. And I opened <laughs> it. And all the kids were like, yo, what is that smell, bro? And they tried to get out and they couldn't because I put like the tarp under the chairs so they're trying to leave they could not leave bro wow and it was too funny bro they were like nah we can't do this i was like you guys couldn't even survive 15 seconds in the belly of a whale how Jonah survived three whole oh, days and three whole nights in there man what a great object teaching was your wasn't your dad putting some water or something through the top <laughs> yeah he was like splashing some water and stuff like that man yeah that is um that's a great parallel of uh the joan uh, the jonah story Mm -hmm. So, so awesome. Um, what else? What else? Home X. Ho we went to Home X. Then we went to, yeah. oh, so we all time Mesa, then Home X, right? Yeah. How many days down there? Yeah, we, well, it was like three days, four days, because we had to drive one day back. One so, day back. yeah. The border. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was a whole another crazy story. <laughs> that's, a whole, that's a whole another. <laughs> that's yeah. A, that's it. That's we needed five more podcasts for that one. Right. Three. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes. We want to make sure we get enough uh, enough people to just come down with us. So we, oh, we'll, yeah. share, We're not we'll share that, that one for next time. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was a good venture. But hey, God's faithful all the time. He gets us through. Yeah. It's all true. these, all these things that we get to teachable moments that we get to learn from, right? And mm -hmm. ministry is all about being flexible. A uh, mistake right. that's never going to happen again, bro. That's it is right. it's not going to happen that's, again. That's, that's right. That's right. Well, man, so awesome. We're we're here about we we're talking about believe. Um, what what verse comes to your mind when we talk about believe? I have it right here, bro. Let me go look it up. There's this one verse that comes to mind that really, you know, seals the deal. It's like th when you think of a verse in the Bible, yes. this is the verse you think of, right? Okay. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. Man. That's it. What does that mean to you? What does that, 
What do you take away from that verse? I know the world uses that a lot. You'll see it at football mm-hmm. games, all kinds of stuff in the audience. John three sixteen, John three sixteen, right? Yeah. Um, but but what what does that imply to you? It really shows that like we can try as hard as we want. We could do like as much stuff as we want, but the only way to truly get into heaven is through Jesus Christ. Like God loved his us so much that he sent his only son. Like that is crazy. Imagine yeah. sending like your kid down to get killed, bro, for a wow. bunch of people that hate you. Like, oh my <laughs> gosh, I couldn't even imagine, bro. Wow. But, like, I don't even have a kid and I can't even imagine. <laughs> You're like, wow, this wow. is crazy, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, there's only one way to heaven, bro. Mm. And that's believing through him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that is so true. What a great foundation, right? We're talking about these mm-hmm. pillars through the uncommon human. We see that believe, and then we, we're going to humility next, and we, we go up the chart um, through the fit to serve method. But uh, believing in Jesus Christ is the one and only way that you're going to be able to follow in line with all the next pillars, right? You have to have that uh, seal deal with Jesus as being your Lord and Savior. Without that, man, your sh- your ship is sh- sinking, right? <laughs> and 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 you your your base and your foundation as your parents have have trained you up, and just the maturity of you get to walk in and seeing you grow and seeing who you are in Christ over these last few months um, is just amazing. And um, I know God's going to bless you know your freshman year, and you're going to be a light to you know, even like you said, even a, at a Christian school, there can be some dark areas, right? That you need to be shining brightly. And, um, you know, we're going to be praying for you. We're going to continue to lift you up in prayer, right? We know you're coming home soon. Christmas, yeah. right? Yeah. Christmas. I'll be Christmas. back. Christmas. All right. So Christmas. I'm going to be jacked, bro. I'm going to be jacked, bro. You're going to be ready, man. I'm gonna th- oh, I'm yeah. be- oh, here's another thing. I yeah. heard there's a group out there that gets up early and does some fitness in the morning at Liberty. Do you know of the group? No, I have no idea, bro. Come I on. Have no idea. I heard they're doing something that, that they're doing something right now, a group back there. And then they get into the word or something. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got just a little birdie told me that I'm, I, I'm a little, little birdie. We'll, we'll, we'll chat more about it. I think there's some, oh. um, there's oh. a group. I, I think I actually do know what you're talking about. Come now, on. They wake up at like 5 a.m., bro. I Come cannot on. do that, bro. Come I on. I cannot Come. do that. Hey, what time did, do I, did I wake you up when we're in, in Mexico? When you grab my leg. Grab your leg. Let's get it, right? That's true. Hey, that's all true. that's part of the training of leading you into the next season of life, right? So what's true. waiting for you, uh, God's going to have his perfect timing. He always does. So, hey, you might be able to, you know, the, the you might be able to show those guys a little bit something that that you have in your repertoire, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll be like, yo, my good old friend Derek showed me these workouts, bro. The corpse, bro. Yes, bruh, the recliner, bro. Come on, Ooh. oh yeah, it's time, right? I can feel yep. the burn just talking about it, bro. Oh my <laughs> god. Yeah, you got to send me some videos. Absolutely, we got to post those, right? Mm-hmm. No, I'm praying for that group, man, that because you you lock arms with those guys, build each other up physically and spiritually. Come on, man. Unstoppable, right? That's what we need. You need oh, a nice yeah. group. Get settled in r- nice and early in your stages for as soon as you get out there. And um, I think it'll be perfect. It'll mm-hmm. Be perfect. Well, awesome, Roman. We've been on a little while here and um we're excited about this next journey for you going into your freshman year, four years there, right? That's just the start. And then we'll see what God has next, mm-hmm. but uh, we'll be praying for you and continuing to see um, how God uses you and love to hear the report. When you come back, we'll jump back on the line back in Christmas time okay. and, and uh, we'll, we'll jump out and see how God has been lining up all these ventures for you. All right. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. God bless. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Uncommon Human Podcast. It's believe time, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Awesome. God bless. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video as much as possible. And visit our exclusive Facebook community where Derek offers training videos and other